Hello and welcome to Veg Around the World with me, Minakshi Karodia, where I believe in simple recipes, authentic taste. This is a show where we make vegetarian food from different countries from around the place, the whole world, and um, the country we've chosen today is Morocco. I don't know if you know much about Morocco, but it's the westernmost part of Africa. Morocco, the name itself, in Arabic, it's referred to as the Western Kingdom. You have the Western, the Middle, and the nearest West. Morocco, actually the name derives from Marrakesh, which is one of the biggest cities in Morocco. Now, the reason why a lot of us know Morocco is because of the famous movie Casablanca. Who could forget Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman? Um, that was a very interesting movie, even though it was in black and white. But when you think of Morocco, it has so many influences in it. It has the influence of Spain, which is just across the water. It has the Arabic influence, and it has, of course, the Berber influence. That's the North African people. Morocco is a country very full of culture, very rich, very full of spices and color. And today, I hope to share some of those recipes with you. So as always, we, I try to make a complete meal for you. We're going to start with a very simple salad. It's a salad with tomatoes and roasted peppers with some spices. And we'll have that with warm pita bread, garlic glazed pita bread. We're going to follow that up with tagine. Tagine is essentially a stew. Normally, the most popular meat in Morocco is chicken. But this is a vegetarian tagine. The good thing about the tagine is basically you just can take any vegetables that you're fond of and you cook them in a certain manner with certain spices and you eat it with the most popular staple which is couscous. And we're going to follow that up with a very interesting dessert. It's baked yogurt or baked um, dahi in Hindi we call it um, with figs. So let's get started. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to get the tagine started and then we're going to go with the baked yogurt because the baked yogurt needs to be in the fridge for a little bit to make it slightly cooler. So let's get started. Now, if you look here, this is a really exciting array of vegetables and it's so nice because um, you can really get all your healthy, all your beautiful colors. And you know, you have all these concepts about which different color vegetables are different nutrients. But it's actually very tasty when you put it together. So I'm going to start off by starting my burner. And um, we're going to put some olive oil. I actually do something very exciting with olive oil. You can take any olive oil you want and you mix it. You, you can put some dried red chili or dried herbs. It's important not to have water. If you put any herbs with water, that can actually cause really dangerous bacteria. But this is so yummy. You just keep it like this. You use it for whatever you want. So you put a dash of olive oil, around a tablespoon. That's good. Let's get started on our figs. That's also very easy. You start off the pan. What we're going to do in this is we're going to add one clove cinnamon, a couple peppercorns, a few drops of vanilla. You could actually put a vanilla pot too, but I normally don't have vanilla pot at home, so I just use like a few drops of vanilla, a good two tablespoons of regular sugar, one, two, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some grape juice to it. Now I always buy my grape juice in these small packs because I get to use whatever I get to use and the rest is drunken up by very happy children. I'm going to put two packs in it because I like my figs to be thoroughly soaked in them. You know, one of the things you need to do, olive oil is the, one of the most healthiest oils to have, but you have to be careful. You shouldn't heat olive oil too much. It burns very easily and it's really bad for you if it burns. So especially if you're doing salads and all, olive oil is the best, but when you're going to be cooking really hot food, hot in the sense of heat, not in the sense of spicy, then you should avoid olive oil. Or at least be very, very careful with it. Mmm, this already smells so good. And what's really nice is, you know, with the leftover, you can make mulled wine. And what I'm going to put in this is some dried figs. If you look at these dried figs, they're extremely... So I've experimented, you know, as I believe in experimenting with food. I tried real figs and dried figs. 
and dried figs taste so much better with this. The flavor is just so concentrated. So we're gonna let that boil for maybe like five, seven minutes and then we'll just let it soak till we're ready to eat. That's good. Okay, and this is hot, so we're gonna put in the onions now. So um, essentially we're gonna put in onion, ginger, garlic, cumin, cumin powder, mm. some cinnamon, believe it or not, they, uh, there's a lot of cinnamon used in Moroccan food for the actual like savory dishes, not just sweet dishes, and paprika. I use cayenne, cayenne pepper, but um, you can use whatever you have, you know, it really, it's not that significant. I actually like to cook my ginger and garlic almost at the same time as the onion. So I'm going to go ahead and put a good tablespoon of ginger <coughs> and a tablespoon of garlic. And I'm going to give it a good stir. Mmm, it already smells good. You can start by cooking these dishes on a high, it's really not a problem. As long as you keep your eye on it, there's no problem at all. While we're doing these two, I also wanted to get started on the baked yogurt. So with the baked yogurt, let me get a dish. It's so easy. You take yogurt. I'm gonna make, I'm not gonna make too much of this. So I'm just gonna take half a cup of yogurt. Slightly more than half, maybe three fourths of a cup. And I'm gonna mix that with half a cup of condensed milk. What also tastes nice is if sometimes you can, you put um, some heavy cream in it. I do that optionally. I sometimes put like a cup of heavy cream, sometimes I don't. Depends upon my mood. I'm going to take this yogurt and you just give it a nice stir. You don't need to add anything else to this. Now the trick of making baked yogurt is to make sure you don't overheat it. So I have set the oven at 260 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to Put it in the oven for four minutes, that's it, just four minutes. Great, that started off. Let's give our onions a stir. Mm, it looks good. Now once the onions are this nice pink color, where it means that they're almost cooked, you should go ahead and add the spices. Now in the spices, we're gonna add half a tablespoon of cumin, a little more, I'm partial to cumin, half a teaspoon of red chili, that might be hot for you so you should just put in the amount or you can leave it out altogether and mm, a tablespoon of the cinnamon, a whole tablespoon, that's what really gets the flavor in. You can actually add whatever vegetables you want to add. But, um, so I've chosen a bunch of beautiful vegetables which I love. There's some butternut squash, some zucchini, and half of three types of red pepper. I just buy this butternut squash already cut from the market and I make it smaller. The trick is to make sure that all your vegetables are similar size. They should be like cubed but similar. So you should go ahead and put all of them in. and some chickpeas, a can of chickpeas. And um, 
some vegetable broth. Some salt. You shouldn't put too much salt. It's always better to add the salt later because if it's not enough salt, you can always add it. But if it's enough salt, then you can't take it out. It's always a problem. So while um, I want to put some carrots and tomatoes too. So what I do with carrots is I normally buy baby carrots because I find them very easy to cook with. Um, baby carrots are essentially just regular carrots which have been pared down. So really. Moroccan stew, very often you can make it just with carrots and peas. I mean, I've seen that done or whatever you feel like doing. The thing with cooking is once you get your spices right, everything else, it's fine. So when I have a baby carrot, I cut it into threes. And I'm going to add some cilantro. And you don't need to really cook it. You just wash it, break it, and it goes and a little bit of parsley. Parsley tastes pretty good. Huh, that's my timer for the yogurt. Let me pull that out. There. Perfect. This is just the consistency it should be. Let's turn the timer off. And give it a good stir. Mm. See, look at this consistency. This is the consistency you're going for. What we're going to do is now we're going to dish it out in the dish we want to serve it in. And we're going to let it set in the fridge. That's the perfect place to let it set. this is we're going to be serving boiled figs which are figs are boiled if you take a look at it mm, this looks really good so I'm just going to turn this off and leave it there when you make baked yogurt what's really interesting is you can serve it with any fruit you can have this is a five minute dish which is a dessert a really nice looking dessert which is ready in five minutes and you can actually serve this with fruits you can serve this with the yogurt gives it a little tartness and the condensed milk gives it a little sweetness and it bakes together to a really nice thing. What I like to do is sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar on top. This is, you can get it anywhere. I just like the way it looks. It really doesn't do, it doesn't crunch or anything like a creme brulee, but it looks very pretty. So I'm going to go put this in the fridge and be right back. And I'm back. Um, I still haven't added the tomatoes. and. I find that tomatoes are a very essential part of this too. So this is something you could use like some canned tomato if you wanted, but or fresh tomato, whatever you have lying around, it's fine. So I'm gonna put in two tomatoes. Again, the joys of cutting with a sharp knife. It's always nice. So one of the things which is really exciting about living in a place like America is you get to try out so many different cuisines. And it's so exciting. Like so many places in the world, I feel really lucky that I'm able to try out. And nowadays, with like availability of internet, if you think of a place, you can normally find a recipe. And you can adapt it to something you like, which is always a fun way of trying out if you can't visit a country and it's not always to visit so possible to visit so many countries. You make the food, you can have a e Moroccan evening, you can have a French evening, what have you. That looks good. I'm just going to cover it now and I'm going to let it cook. I'm going to let it cook on high till it gets a little bit bubbly and then I'm going to turn it on. 
I'm just going to clear up and be right back. So we have started on our main dish, which is the tagine, and we are almost done with our dessert. What we have left is our appetizer, which is tomatoes with baked pepper, and um, we have mint tea. I'm going to make Moroccan mint tea. What's really interesting is world over, normally cooking goes, uh, it's a woman's job to do the cooking. I know a lot of the chefs, the really great chefs are men, but typically in a household, very often, very often, you'll find the woman doing the cooking. I would love to be, you know, I would love to hear of people who, in which the men are cooking, but, but in Morocco especially, cooking is a woman's job, but tea is always, they make it a really elaborate process, and it's, it's a socializing thing where you're going to sit and you're going to talk for hours and you make tea in a certain way. So I have a shortcut for that. What you do is take a nice pot, teapot. You put in any green tea you have. I'm going to put in two pots because I like strong tea. You take some mint, just some washed mint. And I actually mush it up with my hands. I like using my hands for cooking. It's like a sensory thing. I like enjoy it. And you fill it up with some boiling hot water. I have a kettle full of water here, which I'm going to use for the tea and for the couscous. Again, mint. It's just so beautiful. And you, you see this. And just look at the color. It's already got this gorgeous color. We're just going to sit it up, and we're going to let it steep so that it's ready for us to have when we are going to have a meal. Now, let's get started on our roasted pepper. I like to include incorporate colors into a dish because it somehow looks pretty. Um, tomatoes, which is going to be the base of our salad, is red. So, and that's why I'm going to use a yellow bell pepper and a green bell pepper. What you do for bell pepper to roast it is you have to first put oil all over the surfaces, including the crevice, and then you put it into bake. There, are, you can use a brush. I just use my hand. It's just so much easier for me. I'm just going to use this plate. Use some oil. Typically, it's not a good idea to use olive oil for roasted pepper because it gets really hot and that's not good for you. This is fun. This is icky. But hey, we have soap, we have water, we have hands. Hands are the one thing that can get cleaned really easily, so just go for it. Actually, the other thing I should have done before is um, couscous. It's really fun to rub couscous in. With you, to make really good couscous, uh, a tip a friend of mine gave me is to um, work it with your hands. And I'm just going to show you that in a minute. But till then, um, I'm going to put this inside the oven. I'm going to put it on a baking tray, actually. I'm not going to put it on this. It's going to get too hot. And I'm going to set the oven on broil. And I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. So I don't forget that it's inside. So while making tagine, I like using a tagine pot. You don't really need a tagine pot, but any big flat sort of box which can be covered well, that's a good idea. Now making couscous is actually really simple. But you need to keep one thing in mind. Don't put too much water in it. So I'm just going to go get my couscous and be right back. And I'm back. So I'm just going to take another look at this atajin and give it a good stir. Ooh, ooh, that looks nice. 
you know it's done when you know especially the squash and all you're being able to you able to sort of cut into it with your spoon this has a way to go but it smells good as i was saying with couscous it's really important to make sure that you have the right amount of water and you know you go by what's written on the box it's pretty accurate so I'm going to take around 3 fourths of a cup of couscous because with 3 fourths of a cup of couscous you just take one cup of water that's a very easy measure one two three I'm going to put a dash of salt in it not too much because it gets too salty and the tagine anyway has some salt in it and then some olive oil around a tablespoon i'm going to do this your market but a tablespoon's good now you can cook couscous in either hot broth or you can cook it in water i'm just going to do water here because i actually want to get the flavors of my um tajin but you can do it with whatever so i start off working with my fork Actually, this has worked pretty well. I don't think I need to use my hand today. But otherwise, you basically want to make sure that each grain is coated a little bit with oil. So each grain fluffs out. Then you should spread it out. The flatter your base for couscous, the fluffier it turns out. Now, in this, we're going to measure and put in exactly one cup of water, boiling water. you pour it then you put your tagine cover on and that's it you let it sit we need to fluff it now what will happen is the couscous will absorb all the water so we need to let it sit it has to be airtight so if you don't have a tagine pot whatever you have just cling wrap it wrap it nicely you'll see it in around 10 15 minutes all the water will be absorbed then you take a fork and you just whip it like you're whipping eggs and it works okay so what's left is our peppers are getting roasted i'm just going to take a quick peek at them hmm. they have a long way to go we need to cut some tomatoes for the salad now, typically in Morocco, they peel and seed the salad, uh, tomatoes for the salad. However, I personally prefer the taste a lot more with the peel. I like that little crunch, so I'm going to keep it. But I do seed it, so I'm just going to cut this and seed it. I think I want four tomatoes for this, so I'm going to go get two more. And I'm back. Tomatoes are so delicious. I don't know if anybody's ever tried like raw tomatoes. Let me check on the roasted pepper. Hmm. I'm just going to add time to that. Essentially, you need to char a pepper till the top portion of it is black. That's the only thing you need to do for it. I'm going to use this. I'm going to seed it. Seeding's a little bit icky, but it's okay. I personally quite like the seeds, but in the salad, it tastes better. Like when I'm making sandwiches and all that, I never de-seed a tomato. The other thing that's really delicious, which you're not going to be making today, is Moroccan coffee. That's pretty good. You should try it sometime. So Morocco actually also has um, a lot of influence from France and Sp Spain, because it was sort of like a colony for France and Spain for a long time. 
I am going to be right back okay. and I am back. I am going to check on the roasted peppers. Hmm. They need to be done, just know when you are done. Actually, if you have a gas at home, you take the pepper, you put it on the fire and you just turn it. It works so much faster. Let's take another look at Atashin. Mm. Oh, this is almost ready. I like it a little thicker consistency, so I'm going to let it cook for a little bit now with the lid open so it becomes a little thicker. And the one thing we haven't added yet, which actually really makes the tagine what a tagine is, is the dates. I put in some prunes, not dates actually. You can put dates or prunes. I prefer prunes because it's a little sour and some olives. You can see them really like looking up. Let's just cover this and cook it for another five minutes and it should be all set. So essentially, tajine, once you cook the onions, you put everything else in and, you, and if you have a slow cooker, you let it slow cook. Very often the flavors of a vegetable, the way the heat makes the vegetable really taste better. If you do a slow cooking, it's a lot tastier than if you do just regular, like you know, really fast cooking. Fast cooking works, especially if you don't want to spend time on it. But if you have a slow cooker, just put all this in a slow cooker and just let it take its time. Okay, and I'll be right back. Well, I'm back. While we wait for our roast peppers, one thing I'm going to do is make garlic glazed pita bread. So you just buy any pita bread you want. I'm just going to make one right now. Put a little bit of olive oil. You put a little bit of garlic. And you just spread it out. I personally like to sprinkle just a little bit of salt on this. So if I feel like I can have it just by itself and you put it in the oven on a baking tray, I'm going to just do that. I would leave it there just for a minute or two. And while we're waiting for that, for the salad, we're going to spice it with some parsley, some chopped parsley. I think that's enough. I want to make it a little finer because in a tagine, you know, it sort of gets blended in because it's cooked so much. But if you put it in a salad, you don't want very, parsley is pretty, it's tasty, but it's very strongly flavored. So you don't want a mouthful of parsley. We're going to put in, I'm waiting for the roast peppers, which is the last thing we'll add in. But till then, I'm going to put in a little bit of cumin powder, some vinegar, around two spoons, or maybe three. What happens when you put in vinegar, you could put lemon, is that you have all these really the tomato is tart and fresh and the roasted potato, uh, roasted pepper is almost a little bit sweet and then when you put in something sour, it just brings it together and I'm going to put some salt, some pepper, give it a stir. Mmm, it's just right. So whether your pepper is ready or not, this is a good salad by itself. Let me check on the pita. Mm. It's not done yet, we're going to give it another minute. 
and we're just going to wait for the while we wait let's uh, work on the couscous mm. if you can see all the water has been perfectly absorbed all we do is take a fork and fluff it it's called fluffing a couscous like fluffy the rabbit fluff 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 you can see it's like it's really tasty it's gonna taste some Mmm, just the right amount of salt. It's without any salt at all. It's a bit bland, but if you put too much, it gets when you add it to the tagine, it gets too much. Great. What you do is you make a base. However, whenever you serve it, you make a base. If you have a very deep dish, you make a little hole in it, and I think our tagine is ready to be served. Oh yeah. Scoop some. Right on top of it. It looks beautiful. Beautiful. And I'm going to make sure that I get some of the sauce to soak the couscous in, which is why I didn't add the broth in the first place. And I'm going to decorate it with a couple of sprigs of parsley whenever I hear parsley I think of like the Simon and Garfunkel song parsley sage rosemary and thyme <laughs> but mm, that's good so I'm going to leave this aside till we're ready to eat and let's check on the pita bread The pita is perfect. It's crispy, it's crunchy, it's flavorful. What we're going to do is we're going to slice it up. You can use a pizza cutter. I very often use a pizza cutter because you just get these nice smooth lines. I like to cut them in six. It's very hot now, but I like it. I like this hot pita with like the cold salad. Perfect. Let me get a plate out and serve it up. And we leave it for a bit while we're waiting for the roasted pepper to roast. I'll be right back. I'm going to check on that and be right back. And I'm back. While I was gone, I got the baked yogurt out of the fridge and I actually Sorry, I went ahead and just peeled the green and yellow peppers, which I'm just going to add now. Um, this is an extremely tricky trick thing. So if you want, you do it. Otherwise, you can just go ahead with the tomato. Let me dish that out with the pita. There, beautiful. And I'm going to get a tagine pot. Get some yummy couscous. With all the beautiful vegetables you can see around it. Again, it's always nice to decorate with a little herb. Our mint tea is ready, so let's pour that out. I just love this mint tea. It is so good. What we're going to do is we're going to add a spoon of, it needs to be sweet. You can sweeten it with whatever you want. I personally like using brown sugar for this. I just love the way it tastes in this. 
a spoon of brown sugar give it a good stir mm. and last but not least let's not forget our baked yogurt with figs so this is our baked yogurt which came from the fridge and this is our fig mm. so I'm going to serve this with two figs these figs have absorbed the beautiful grape juice Actually, one's good. I think one's good. And um, bon appetit. And this is the last thing. This wine you have, this uh, grape juice, mix it with some really cheap red wine and you have the perfectly mulled wine for a cold evening. Bon appetit. Thank mm -hmm. you.